What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode of the fighting game tutorial series, we are going to convert the fighting game template from Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5. I was holding back on this for quite a bit because I was working with the GGPO for UE4 plugin, implementing rollback netcode using this plugin. When it was released, it was made for Unreal Engine 4, and that was perfectly fine. I have done a lot of digging over the last few months to learn more about the engine code, about what we have to change to make the engine work with rollback netcode, and I believe I'm at a point where I'm confident enough that we can adapt the Unreal Engine 5 to work with rollback netcode as well. You can stay on Unreal Engine 4 if you'd like. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that these episodes are still as generic as possible. They still work in Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5, just like I do for all my series. So don't worry, there's no support being lost. I already had a global episode where I went through all my series and converted them to Unreal Engine 5. The fighter was included in that, but I want to do a specific one for the fighter now since it's been updated quite a bit. As always, I like to show you the entire process, so I'm not hiding anything. You should be able to pick up the first episode of the Fighting Game Tutorial series and follow it through to the end even without other experience. So that is why I am going over this again now that I'm converting. I'm officially going to be using this Unreal Engine 5 copy of the fighting game. And so I wanna make sure I walk you through it entirely. That way we can all be on the same page. So to get started, this is my Epic Marketplace. So I have my Epic Launcher, loaded it up. I went to the Unreal Engine category and then went to Library. I'm gonna make sure I have a version of 5.0 or higher. So in this case, I am going to use the most recent that has been fully released at this time, which is 5.3.2. You can press the little plus next to engine versions to add another one. I could have any version I want. But I'm going to go to 5.3.2 just so I can be as updated as possible for you guys. So for whatever you want to use, this should work. I'm going to go ahead and launch that once I have my version selected. So at this point, the Unreal Engine 5 menu has popped up here and I can see all my Unreal Engine projects, even ones that are not in Unreal Engine 5. So I have my fighter template here that is 4.27. I can click on that and to convert it, I can quite literally just open it, but there are a few different options here. So you can read this. The project was made with a different version of the Unreal Engine. Converting to this version will rebuild your code projects. New features and improvements sometimes cause API changes, which may require you to modify your code before it compiles. Content saved with newer versions of the editor will not open in older versions. We recommend you open a copy of your project to avoid damaging the original. So I'm going to take this advice. I do want to open a copy. You could press open a copy here, but if you really do want to skip it, you can click more options and check those options out. You have the ability to convert in place, which will convert the actual project. And then you have the ability to skip and it will just open it as the original version. Again, I am going to make the copy. So I'm going to select open a copy. Pretty soon after you will be able to go to your file explorer and go to where the folder is that your original project is in and the new folder for the new project will be here. So it was fighting game 4.27. It's been updated to fighting game 5.3. So I can go in here and the first thing I want to do is open up my solution and I want to build this. However, since it was previously an Unreal Engine 4 project and not an Unreal Engine 5 project, this is not going to allow us to build. We will need to make a new solution and you'll see here in the Solution Explorer on the right hand side that the engine will have the UE4 section here and it will say it's not found. Same with the games folder, it has the fighter template solution there, but you'll see that it is also not found. So those project files will not be able to be loaded since they are for a different version. So we'll actually have to close out of our Visual Studio and we'll have to make a new solution file. So we can actually go ahead and delete the solution file at this point because we don't need that old one. We're gonna make a new one. We can right click on our U project file and click generate Visual Studio project files. Let this finish. For me, it's going to fail because of the GGPO for UE4 plugin. You have two options for this. You can go and fix the errors or you can just remove it for now. I have more content coming on this in the future, very soon actually. So I'm going to just remove it for the purposes of this episode. But fixing the errors actually isn't bad. I have it all documented. I will go over it step by step in that GGPO episode, but for now it's just going to be easier to remove it from the plugin folder. What I recommend is just keeping a copy of your old one, your fighting game 4.27 like I did, keeping the GGPO set up in that plugins folder and just removing it from the UE5 version. 
This way you have a backup and you can also copy it from there when we do fix all the updates and the issues in the future. But you can also convert your project right now without having to go into a bunch of stuff. Right now I just want to deal with converting the actual project. The GGPO updates will come naturally when we implement it in that episode. And this time it should succeed. So when it succeeds, we will get the solution file. This can take a little bit of time, so don't worry if it does. Once it finishes, go ahead and open up that solution file and we will try and build the project. It's okay if we get errors, we're gonna resolve them right here. Now you'll see that the solution explorer is filled out. So looks like it normally does. And we're good to go. This means we can try and build. So our build configuration should be the same as they were before. So we can simply go to build, build solution. Now the build has completed. We did get a few errors, but that's to be expected. Some of them are gonna be specific to my project. Some may be specific to your project. So for this first case, it's actually just telling me that the plugin I have doesn't work with the engine version. So if you have that, you can open up the U project with something like Notepad. And at this point, I can disable the plugin that it doesn't like. So in this case, the plugins for the Blockout Tools plugin can be set enabled false, and that will actually fix that issue and we will try building again and go to the next error. The build completed again, so this time we're gonna go look at the errors that we have, and we'll see that we have some actual errors that are related to our logic, and so now we can easily debug this. So let's go to the first one, and that is in the landed function. In here, we're using something called hit.actor.get. So when you land, you get this hit result and it's determining what you landed on. This method has been deprecated. Instead of hit.actor.get, it's hit.getActor. If you change it to this, this will fix the error. So now we can go ahead and build again and go to the next error. This is the same deal. So for our next error, we have another hit result issue. And this one is going to be in the landed function a little bit down below. We're going to change our hit.actor.get to hit.getActor. Then we have one more here we don't even have to build. We can go check it out. It's the same deal, also in landed. And it says hit.actor.get. By now, you probably know what we're going to do. We need to change it to hit.getActor. That will fix all of these issues. Now let's go ahead and build again and see what we get. All right, we've built again, we have another error. Remember that you can skip any errors that aren't related to your project, so we're only interested in errors from the Fire Template project, like this one right here. This is in our base game instance, and this is our on controller connection change. So the event has changed between Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5, so we wanna to go to our base game instance.h where we defined this and we overwrote this, and we'll scroll down to it. This is the delegate for it, but that's not actually what we have to change. We have to change the function itself, our void controller connection change right here. That platform ID needs to change from an int32 to this specific type that they have here, which is called F platform user ID. You can make it look how I have here, and you can try and build. This won't work because your CPP is not going to be filled out properly. Let's go to the CPP file. And at this point, we see where we are adding the object to the function, that's fine, but the actual function definition here needs to change the variable, the parameter here, to an fplatform user ID, just to match the header. Once you have the matching, it will build. Quick note, don't forget the semicolon like I did, and you will be good to go. Now the project should finally build properly and we can launch the editor. Now we finally have our fighting game in Unreal Engine 5. We can boot it up and look for bugs and anything that could be different from the Unreal Engine 4 version. And there is one main thing that I found that is in our base game mode HUD. So I'm gonna go to my base game mode HUD and we can look at our health bar and our super meter. You'll notice that they are invisible for player two. 
The reason for that is because the size x I was setting to a negative value to flip that. In Unreal Engine 5, that actually does hide it. There is a solution to this that's very simple. We can scroll down to the Render Transform, Transform section, and change the scale in here instead of the scale up top. That will allow you to use the proper scale. We will have to move it into the right spot. So just change the scale from 1.0 to negative 1.0 on the X and we'll be good to go. Let's do this for the super meter as well. So you'll see that we had a negative size X here. We don't wanna use that. We wanna have the same size X, but we wanna change the render transform scale from 1.0 to negative 1.0. And at that point, we will have to move our health bar and our super meter into the proper spot. If we take the position X of our progress bar and we subtract the size from it, we will get the proper position that we actually want this progress bar to be at. And we can actually do this right in the engine. We can take our position X and say, subtract then the same as our size. So in this case, my size is 712. So position X minus 712. And when we do this, it will move to the appropriate spot on the HUD. We wanna do the same thing for our super meter bar as well. Take your position X and subtract the size X, which in this case is 680. And it will move the super meter into the right position. My scale of this super meter actually got changed to 0 0.1 instead of negative one by accident. So let's make sure we fix that, make that negative one and then it will appear as it should. Now at this point, we are good to go. Make sure you test all the features. There very well may be other broken features that have simple fixes like this, and I plan on covering all of them. So if you find any that are related to your conversion from Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5, let me know. I really hope you enjoyed the content of this episode, and if you did, please subscribe. It does more for myself and the channel than anything else you can do. I just really appreciate it. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership, Patreon members, and Discord supporters. You guys are amazing, and you keep the series alive, so thank you for all the love and support. I cannot say it enough. Thank you. If you've had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. There is a link in the description, and all the support is completely free. Anyway, guys, like I said, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.